This series aims to inspire teachers and community centre managers to apply information technology in their teaching and learning environments. This is Litsibojo High School in Medolen, Soweto. Litsibojo has 700 learners in the grades 8 to 12. It is one of three girls' schools in Soweto. Recently, it was fortunate enough to be identified as a site for the Gauteng online project. There are 24 computers available for learners and staff, and they are all networked to a central server. This means that all the computers are able to print to a single printer and can receive and share files. It is this sharing of files that is of significance. The educator can create one document and then share it across the network for learners to use. The advantage of using uh, computers as well is to cut down on costs because using a lot of photocopiers and duplicators not only are you expected to service it, but also the cost attached to the purchasing of that pay for paper, which is not any cheap anymore. Uh, you cut on that because you don't have to do a lot of bulk duplication. Daniel's grade 10s are currently doing work on factorization. He found an exercise with 13 examples and created an interactive worksheet. He used the Forms feature in Microsoft Word to create drop-down menus, strategically positioning them next to questions. The drop-down menus contain the answers, only one of which is correct, much like multiple choice. The learners then have to work out which menu item is the correct answer. It's advantageous to use those drop-down menus and, and forms um, to give a child, you know, an option of selecting from answers. There will be two ways in which I, that I can use to mark the work. The one way would be for learners to go through the worksheet, answer those questions, and then save it in their name and print the document. Then I will get a hard copy that I could mark. The other way would also be learners will go through the very same worksheet and save it in their own name and give and, and save it on, 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 on the computer itself and so that I can then be able to access it and mark it onto the system. The computers themselves are helpful to us indeed. We, we, you don't just get stuck with it. I mean, you could play around with it and ultimately arrive at where you want to because of the simple programs that are attached to the, 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 the Microsoft Word especially. Let's look at how Daniel built his interactive worksheet. For the purpose of this example, we will be using Word 2003. First, you need to open MS Word. Look for the Start button in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Select All Programs from the menu. A second menu containing MS Office appears. Select MS Word. You should now have an empty white page containing a flashing black cursor. Start by typing a heading on your page and format it by changing the font size. Name your worksheet and add instructions. Once you've typed up all your instructions, start adding your examples. Daniel typed out the questions and added drop-down boxes to his page. To do this, select View from the top menu and then click on Toolbars and select Forms. A small toolbox should pop up on your screen. Make sure that you can identify the Forms toolbar. It will either be added to the rows of the icons at the top of the screen or it will float above your text. You can identify it by the padlock on the right-hand side of the bar. The icon we are interested in is the third one along from the left-hand side of the toolbar. 
This icon will allow you to create drop-down boxes. Position your cursor on the page where you would like to create a drop-down box. Click on the third icon and a grey box will appear on your screen. Right-click on the grey box and select Properties from the menu. A drop-down form fill option window appears. In this window, you will add your list of correct and incorrect answers for your learners. Add text by typing inside the drop-down item box and click on Add. Make your first item, select from the list below and then add your answers in the same way. If you make a mistake, you can remove items by selecting the Remove button. If you want to change the order of the items in the list, you can select an item and then move it up or down the list by using the Move arrow buttons. Once you have inserted all your items, click on OK. On returning to your document, you may be disappointed to find that not much has changed. That's because forms pages need to be protected before they are activated. This is a relatively simple step. Select the Forms toolbar. Identify the Protect Form icon. It looks like a little padlock. Select it. You will find that all the other icons in the toolbar become disabled, but more impressively, if you click on the grey box on your page, a list appears. The list disappears when an answer is selected. Now you have a choice. You can either create new boxes with different selection items or if you have loaded all the answers into one drop-down box, you can simply copy and paste it as many times as you need it. First, disable the Forms Padlock Protection icon before continuing. Then select the box and press Ctrl-C on your keyboard. This is the copy command. Then position your cursor where you want your next box to be positioned and press Ctrl V. This is the paste command. Before you save the document, you will need to make sure that you have protected it again for the drop down boxes to work and also to prevent learners from changing the answers. Make sure that you save the document in a place where your learners can access the file on the network. A public directory or folder is preferable. The learners will not be able to access the file on the hard drive or C drive of your machine. In Daniel's example, he simply placed the drop-down list containing his mathematical multiple choice answers next to the questions. Biology, art or even geography teachers may want to work with pictures in the background. Say, for example, there are areas of the pictures that you want learners to identify. You can position the drop-down boxes containing the multiple-choice answers over those parts of the picture that require labels. The usage of computers lately, I have fallen in love with it. Uh, it has made my life a bit easier. I'm able to design worksheets and give them to learners, and the learners also are able to give me feedback, the very same computers. I thought this lesson was mind-opening, very interesting and fantastic. I found it uh, really exciting because it, it, um, this opportunity doesn't come always. So it was an experience for me to actually use it and I found it like really easy, you know, to use the computer. You're given options, then all you have to do is click on your own answer, you know. So it's very quick and easy. It was interesting mostly because we were using computers. It's not every day we use computers doing maths. So it was fun and exciting to work on. This example was specifically focused on grade 10 factorization, but the skills demonstrated can be used to build interactive worksheets for any subject. The drop-down box is especially useful in creating multiple choice tests.